Shalom. This is Kirksey Todd. I um, also go by the name of Yael Ben Yehuda, and I'm addressing this video to my five beautiful children. Um, first of all, I want to say I love you all, and I want to say I'm, um, I apologize to you for um, not being there like I should have. I know there was a lot of um, situations where we could not be together. Um, as I would have liked or as most of all as you um, deserved for your father to be. And I apologize for not making more of an effort um, to be there in your lives. That falls um, completely on me. So I just want to um, ask for your forgiveness for not um, being there like I should be, like I should have. Some things were out of my control, and some things were definitely in my control to at least make um, a stronger effort um, to be there. But I just want you to know that I do love you. I pray for y'all every day that y'all will be successful and that y'all will be great in the earth and impact the earth for the good. And learn from the errors of um, your father. And to be a, a better person. Strive to be a better person. Always try to be better than your um, your parents. But I'm making this video to really say to you, I want you to know who you are. I want you to know that you have rich blood flowing through your veins. And I just don't simply mean Todd's, Todd blood. I want you to know that you have royal blood flowing through your, your veins. You have the blood of the kings and prophets and the priests flowing through your veins. I want you to know that you are the descendants of a proud people, of a people that is great upon the earth. We just need to wake up to the reality of who we are. And the reason why I was probably the way I was in um, times past, it was simply because I was just still consciously unaware of who I was. And when you do, you do not know who you are, you will settle for anything. You will settle for anybody to form and shape you into the image that they want you to be. But, you know, I have to say it's um, better late than never. I know who I am. I know um, whence I come. I know who my ancestors are. And you are the descendants of the people of the book. You are the descendants of the Hebrews, um, of the Israelites in the Holy Bible. This is not talking about a religion. This is talking about your nationality. This is talking about your identity, your bloodline, your birthright. This is not about a religion. This is just about knowing who your God is and knowing that which he has required of you as his people. So, I want to apologize First, for not being there like I should have been. And for not sharing with you what it is that your father do believe. I am not a Christian. I used to be a Christian. Some of you, um, I was in your life when I was a Christian. And I, all I worried about was telling you how to behave in church. And not not to embarrass your your mom and me. That's not what it's about. That's not what I'm into. I am into the, the faith of my forefathers, your forefathers. I'm into what? The faith of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were into. They serve the one true living God. And this one true living God gave his people, our people, a Torah, 
divine instructions on how to live in Israel, how to relate to him and how to relate to one another and other people outside of our circle. That is what it's about. It's a, it's a culture. It's a, um, it's a lifestyle. It's not a religion. So I just want to let you know who you are. You are special. You are the descendants of kings, priests, and the prophets. And royal blood runs through your veins. And I want to let you know that the God of your forefathers is your God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is your God. Because of who you are. You are the offspring. You are the descendants, the physical descendants. Because of the bloodline. Of our father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is who you are. And if you want to see your identity. Because the Bible contains prophecies. About the people of the book. And I, I challenge you. To. Go to the book. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. And I challenge you to read the whole chapter. Because the whole chapter is about you. But especially starting at verse 15. To verse 68. But read the whole chapter. Because it is about us. And just ask yourself. Who do these signs? Who, do, who does this prophecy actually point to? That's all you have to do. Because I want you to know. Being a Hebrew. Is not about hating other people. I know it's people on YouTube making videos. Saying they're Hebrew Israelites. And talking about the white man is the devil. And all this that and another. That's not what your father is a part of. Because the very scriptures tell us. That we are to be a light to the nations. And that the house of God is a house of prayer for all people. So some people just got too much hate in them because of the things that have been done in the past to our people. And things that are presently being done to our people. But that does not change the mandate that the creator gave us upon this earth. And that is to be a vehicle of blessing him and of teaching the nations about how to serve this one true God. And that's it in a nutshell. He gave our ancestors commandments to follow. And he said through being obedient unto him, he will bless us. It's not about paying tithes and paying for blessings and it's not about calling on a certain name. It's not about pleading blood. It's about walking upright before the God of our forefathers, our Heavenly Father, our Creator. It's about walking according to His will and being true to who we are in this earth. That's what it's about. It's not a religion. It's a culture. It's a way of life. It's just like Naturally, being a part of a family, you have rules that your parents have established in the family so that the household excuse me, will function properly. That's all it is. And God said, I gave you these law, statutes, and commandments that you will prosper in the land and make your way successful. That's all it's about. It's not about a religion. It's about being a nation. Of priests and kings that are that is um that's supposed to live a certain way on the earth because of the God that chose them. We are the chosen people. Like I said, I, I want you to take up this challenge. Read the book of Deuteronomy. It is the fifth book in the Bible. 
start at chapter 28. And there's other places in the Bible that reveals our true identity. The only people that fit these prophecies are us. Like I said, this is no, this is no hate talk. This is not putting down any other um, race. It just is what it is. God chose a people in the earth to represent him and to be his people. That's God. And that's not something we did. He chose a people. And we fit that description of the people. And since your father already did the DNA test, we come from that region where it was a mass um, exodus of our people that left, fleed from Israel, that went down like into Egypt, went down to the, um, the coast of Israel. Um, Africa, where we went to settle, where we went to flee from the persecution. And we assimilated in with other nations, with other people in that continent. And we have um, forgotten our identity. We have forgotten who we are. And when we were brought here as slaves, we was already a lost people. We lost our language, we lost our culture, we lost our God, and we were given a God to serve. It's all in the book. It only happened to us. These prophecies fit us and reveal to us who we are. So as your father, I just want you to know who you are. Um, you're of the age where you're a free thinker. You could choose to believe whatever you want. But I want you to take this challenge upon yourself. Even um, reach out to me and um, ask me questions that I will gladly love to um, answer. And hopefully one day we can sit down and go through this together. So you can make the um, conscious decision to understand who you are and to embrace your true identity. You are the physical descendants of the people of the book. You are not Jews. You are Hebrews. You are the Israelites. You are the offsprings of the 12 tribes of Israel. And Yah, our Heavenly Father, the Creator, the God in the Bible, has a name. The shortened form is Yah or Yehovah. Some people say Yahweh. But when you read the Bible, when you read Deuteronomy, you're going to see Lord in all uppercase letters. In the actual Hebrew scripture, in the Hebrew manuscripts, that is the Yud, the He, the Va, or Wa, the He. The Yud, the He, the Va, the He. And it makes up the name Yehovah. That is the name of our God. That is the name of our creator. That is the name of our true king. So when you read this, um, this, read this chapter, you will see the name of your God. And you will see what he say if we be um, upright before him. And when I mean upright before him, that's when we walk according to his commandments and when we serve and acknowledge him only as God. And then from 15 on, it reveals to you what will happen if we do not. And you just have to be honest and transparent. When you read 15 to the close of the chapter, you will see that it is only identifying our people. So, this is your father, Kirk Todd, a.k.a. Yael Ben Yehuda. And as I say, I want you to, um, you know, take up this challenge. Read chapter 28 of Deuteronomy, especially 15 to the um, close of the chapter. Anyway, I want you to know that I love you um, greatly. Um, I miss you all. I pray that all is well with you and will be well with you. But it is time for you to realize who you are. And it is a, it is a birthright and a legacy that will not leave you. So look within the pages of the Holy Scriptures. And when I say the Holy Scriptures, when I say the Bible, I'm only speaking from 
Genesis to Malachi, if you have a King James or English Bible. That is our holy scriptures of an Israelite. Now, there's some Israelites that embrace the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And they worship Jesus as God. We do not embrace that concept. Because the God of our forefathers knew nothing of a Messiah that they needed to place their faith in. That would be God in the flesh who would die for their sins. Because the very scriptures that I'm talking about, God makes it perfectly clear that no one would die for your sins. He said he alone is our savior. And besides him, there is no other. So our, our ancestors only worshipped Yah. They only worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is our, their God, and that is our God. They prayed to him directly. They did not have to use another name so that their prayers will ascend to him. We have a direct relationship with the God of our forefathers if we will only return to him. And that's what he's constantly telling us through this book. If my people will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, nowhere in there, do he say if we will humble ourselves and turn to a Messiah? And I'm getting ready to close. But I just want to read one verse to you. And it's from the book of Leviticus. No, no, not Leviticus. I'm sorry. The book of Ecclesiastes. 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 Um... It's the, it is the book right after Proverbs. I want you to go to the 12th chapter. Because I want you to hear what Yah requires of us. It's very simple. This is chapter 12, starting at verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Hallelujah. That's it in a nutshell. Our God wants us to return to him and worship him alone as God. And keep the commandments, the laws, the statutes, on the regulations and the teachings that he gave to our ancestors. So that we will be blessed in the land of promise. And that we will be blessed in the earth. And then we will be in our right minds and be found doing right in the earth. And then and only then can we be a light unto the nations when we reflect the righteous standards of this one true God. Because God also declares to us when we do this, that the nations surrounding us will say, this is a mighty people that have a God so near unto them. And have such righteous commandments that he has given them to do upon the earth. But right now, when people look at, look at us, they make mockery of us. Because we are so disjointed. So, um, we're not even connected to our God who is our source. We have lost our way. And it's time for us to return to the God of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and his name is Yahuwah. You might hear different variations of the name. You might hear people say Jah. You might hear people say Yah. But he is the God that we need to return to. We have to walk away from all other gods that is not the God that made himself known to us. So that is all I wanted to say. I love you. I will continue to be praying for you. And I hope that you would take this challenge upon you. And I hope that you will come to know the God of your father. Who has embraced the God of his forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Shalom, love, and blessings. Love you all. Shalom.